to camera. There we go. All right. So for today's fun and games, we've got the gearbox in this guy to rebuild. I just buy King Kong track. Cool. That'll give you something to do while you're uh, uh, not 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 going out so much. <laughs> Okay, stick that over there. That'll do. Uh, does that light help? A little bit, a bit more contrasty. 112 scale, yeah. <coughs> they look quite good. They're a bit more, uh, what should we say, scale in terms of how you might drive them than a lot of the bigger four wheel drive trucks, I think. Going to get stuck a lot and need towing out and all that if you go off road. So, how does one get to the gearbox? I think we've got to take out the battery tray, which is two screws, and then it kind of hinges up with these two screws at the back. So, that'll come out. And after that, I'm not sure, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. How hard can it be? Those screws are full of mud. <laughs> Two wheel drive truck, yeah. Well, that's tight. Yeah, you'll have to have another truck with it so you can tow it out. <laughs> Hello RC Mojo. Hello Chris Chevy. Ah. Are you having a nice unpaid vacation as well? So that's all the screws loosened, so now we should be able to undo it with these things. Yeah, that'll work. I have a vacation, but I get paid. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> Think by two truck, are they cheap? Yeah. If you can, why not? Sounds good to me. <sighs> Kitchen towel out. Put some screws on there so I don't lose them. Should kind of lift up. Ah, my toggle switch is getting in the way. There we go. And then twist it, and out it comes. Cool. That was easier than I thought. So, there's a gearbox. Mm. I'm fairly sure it comes out without having to take these little servos out. on the bottom. So we've got that plate there, but there's no screws for the gearbox. So let's take the motor out and see what that looks like. $820 for both. 
Not bad. That's going to be like 500 quid, I guess. Something like that. That's about the same price as a new one of these, actually, in the UK. <laughs> Yeah, pretty good value. Two trucks for that. Oh, that doesn't look so bad. Oops. <laughs> Bullet connectors. It's a little bit stiff. It's not bad though. Still, it's the only thing that I haven't rebuilt on this now, so I'll carry on anyway, I think. So I guess this little skid plate on the bottom will come off next. I have spare bolt. I've got lots of spare bolts. <laughs> ah. I have new soldering iron yesterday. Ah, you got a nice Heiko, or is it an off-brand one like mine? Does that come off? I feel like they should come off. Oh no, there's two more screws. Ah, no, that screw must go into the front of the gearbox. Okay, so I'm going to guess the front of the gearbox is now free, but there must be more. Ah, I can see a screw, but it's caked in mud. I think it's a screw. I think it was once. Sad experience, eBay, and there they online. Hmm. The one I got is called Hard Head. Right. <laughs> There's a name. <laughs> I have by new soldering iron. Sadly have delivered. Haven't delivered I guess. Yeah, I think most of the postal system around the world is struggling a bit right now. I think I just got in with a few of my orders, but the ones that I've had for the last week or so haven't uh, moved yet. Hmm, how am I going to undo that? This B control has to come off the other one. Can I get one of these iron keys in? Haven't, I mean expensive. Yeah. No. Can't quite get the end of the Allen key all the way into the screw head. It's too full. <coughs> yeah, I'm waiting for a few parts. Yeah, I think it might be waiting a while. 
But there's nothing we can do about it. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm sad I meant to say that on eBay and some of the online shops are getting expensive on the stuff that we can buy. Yeah. There's a fair bit of price gouging going on. Ah, crack. I think I've cracked it. Uh, that's two and a half. There we go. Although. When I was at the supermarket a couple of days ago, all the normal stuff was back in. Although I was there at six o'clock in the morning, which probably helped. <laughs> Lucas View just subscribed on YouTube. Ah, does that mean you're watching this or is that just somebody just subscribed on YouTube? Because I don't know how that works. If you are watching this, by all means, type something in there so I've got some vague idea what's actually going on. <laughs> hi, hi. More interesting bits. Enjoy. Well, if I can get the gearbox out, it might be interesting. I'm kind of guessing and pulling bits off until it comes out at the moment. How hard can it be, as the uh, professionals always say? So there we go, there's another screw down there. Let's unplug that. Still waiting for RC Volvo to release. Oh, the big truck. Yeah, I wonder if that's going to get delayed. Clean that screw head with a cocktail stick. Just I buy tools set up for old tools and tips are broken. Ah. Can you not get hex drive tips from like your local hardware store? That might do. How goes it from Canada? Pretty good. We've pretty much done all the non-RC work I've got so I get to play with these for a while now which will be fun as long as I don't need to order too many parts since they probably won't turn up anytime soon but that's all right so is that everything to get the gearbox out oh it moves it moves there it goes cool so that's the gearbox loose I better take the drive shafts off I suppose Oh, that just spins around in there. <sighs> delayed. I think it will be delayed. Nope. Ah, no bits in the hardware store. Right. Hmm. What else could you try? Sometimes petrol stations and places like that sell little boxes of tools that might be alright. One and a half and two. Ah, that's a bit smaller than most of the DIY type stuff, isn't it? Hmm, not sure what you do there. Front drive shaft off. It'll just spin around. This one should be alright. Yeah. Alright, prop shafts are sort of free, but a bit stiff. I think that should be the gearbox free. I can unhook that one. 
And there's a zip tie I'm going to have to cut there, I think. Hmm. No, that prop shaft is hanging on for dear life. <laughs> Got it. Aha. Hey. Okay, that's out. Uh, no. There's a pair of cutters. There's some cutters. What a mess. Definitely been underwater. <laughs> Bit of rust around the bearings, but not too bad. Uh, how does that servo come off? Two screws in through the end. All right. Because the Infinity set is rubbish. Yeah, Infinity Turnergy maybe. I don't know. That looks like a uh, autocorrect. <laughs> But I know what you mean. An awful lot of the, um, uh, what should we say, RC specific tools aren't brilliant all the time. See, th these ones that I got, I, I paid about three quid for the whole set. And while they're wearing down very quickly, I'm just going to cut the end off a couple of millimetres at a time. And that will do me for a while. Because these ones have a hex all the way up to the handle. Yeah. Put that down there. Doesn't seem to matter what you really get with the really small sizes. They do all wear. Just because they're very small. Uh, the best ones that I've got are the um, these ones. I've had long enough that all the printing's worn off. But these are Bondus. So, made in USA. And even the little one and a half millimeter with a ball end is still fine. Lost count of how many kits and stuff I built with them. It's true. Dramatic music. One by two week broke. Oh. Yeah, didn't last long then. <laughs> All right. What I'll probably do is, before I rebuild it, I'll pop downstairs with this and give that a brush outside. I won't bother cleaning it properly, because it will only get muddy again, obviously. But it would be good to get the loose stuff out, because it looks like the bottom of a dried out pond. Which isn't good. <laughs> the gearbox, I can brush out up here, I think. Alright, where's me brush? Where's me brush? Whoa. What a state. And for those wondering, it's a good idea to clean the outside of things like this before you take them apart. Because if there's all sorts of grit and stuff on the outside, when you take it apart, most of it will end up on the inside. And contaminate the grease and everything. Oh, a bit of rust on the spur gear. So that's probably water that's got on the pinion and has uh, spread some rust onto there. That's not good. I have to give the pinion a good inspection. 
use the one and a half most common to hit one out quickly. Broke my bolt head. Oh, uh, rounded out the hexes. Yeah, it's not difficult to do, especially if the hexes on the screws aren't the deepest to start with. They're rather easy to damage. That's wrapped in hair. Where did that come from? So buy five spare ones, five and 2.0, 2.5 and two, I don't know, but yeah, extra tips, always useful. <laughs> oh, that's got a rubber seal around the shift, never noticed that before, that's nice, anyway, keep cleaning. Made a mess. There's my box. Dang it. Because RC four drive bolts not good on the 1.5. Yeah, even a lot of the uh, uh, proper name brand ones when they use hex hardware, half the screws aren't formed properly. They are ever so cheap, not necessarily good. <laughs> but still. They're marginally better than the old Phillips screws that everybody used to use. But only just. <laughs> oh, I think that's good enough to work on. Just about. So we've got three screws that hold this end cap on, and there's another one, two, three, four, ah, that looks like a nut of a buried screw. So that's got to come off first, and then there's like another layer, which reveals all the two speed stuff I guess. Okay, let's see. see what's inside. Let's have another bit of kitchen towel to put the greasy bits on. Change bolt, I think, titanium ones. Ah, oh, why not? You can get all the um, complete screw kits. So, other than cost, obviously, there's no excuse not to. 
would be nice if the kits came with good screws to start with, but I think that's asking a bit too much. <laughs> Okay, place your bets now. What's the grease in the back of the gearbox going to look like? Is it still going to look like grease? Is it going to be rusty? Uh, let's do that. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on, focus. <laughs> I think it's gone into manual focus mode or something. No, it doesn't want to focus. Oh, well, it's going to be blurry. I'm sure you can still see well enough. Alright, here we go. That does not look great. Okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely had water in there. Yeah. So what are these then? Are they driven? That's driven. Hmm, not sure how that comes apart. Two pound two dollars, sorry, per bolt. That's expensive. Ah, does that push out? No. Nope. Well, take more screws out and see what comes loose, I suppose. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> yeah, I think we're definitely starting to see why it was making some strange noises. Oh, there's a shim on that one. We need to keep an eye on that. Well, so far, all the screws are the same length. Funny, just rebuilt my RC four-wheel drive gearbox. What colour was the grease? <laughs> uh, brown and flaky. So that's all the visible screws, but there's a nut. I think, is it a nut or is that the back of a screw? That might be a screw. It is a screw. It was just so full of mud it looked like a nut. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now this one must be longer than the other ones, I guess. Oh no, maybe not. No, same length. Very cool. Do you why can't everybody build stuff where all the screws are the same size? Oh, there's another one hiding in there. Brown blue. <laughs> so slightly better than this then. <laughs> yep, all the same length. <laughs> ah, something's moving. Vaguely possible, I have to take the spur gear off as well. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, I reckon that shaft, that shaft needs to go through with this. Maybe. Because that, oh no, it is going through. And that's the other end of that. Yeah, no, that moves. So that's not holding it in. Uh, 
and everything's moving. Could it be the output shafts are stuck in the bearings? Push harder. No. It's definitely looking like it because one end of the gearbox is moving quite freely. Uh, like so, but this end of the gearbox is not moving much at all, and that's right where the output sits in that bearing. Does that come out? No, nope, but it will come out. There's nothing holding anything on there. Could it be... No, that's the other end of that. So that's... That's the other output. On there. So that should just push out. I think it's stuck. Um, because all I service my one O C D W D forty time. <laughs> Maybe. Let's just see if I can get in there and lever it a bit and see if that pops it free. If not, I'll have to look at the instructions. <laughs> Always feel like cheating when I have to look at the instructions. got rust all the way around the output shaft onto the inner race of the bearing. Oop, that, that one came out. <laughs> and it's left a pin in there, so we'll have that out before I lose it. There we won't. That pin does not want to move. I wonder if that's holding it together. like a definite maybe <coughs> need some different pliers I think uh, I guess I can get behind it with this no uh, always need a tool that I haven't got up here or do I? Oh no, I've got some parallel pliers here. That'll do. Just when 1.1 scale, I have a service check with my OCD kicks in. <laughs> Maybe have C clip. No, I don't think so. It doesn't feel like that. It feels like uh, it, it wants to come out, but there's just something stiff in the way. Ooh. These pliers are too big and I can't get in. Mm. That one come out? No. Maybe. Get under that gear. No, that one's definitely 
and truly in so I need to get that pin out it's just slightly rusted in and I can't really use heat on this because the gearbox is plastic moved it a bit so if I grip that like crazy uh, ah, I've got some smaller parallel jaws there further it's now below the surface are these gonna work any better coming very gradually This, kids, is why you don't leave your gearboxes to go rusty. Even if you think they're full of grease, they'll still go rusty. <laughs> there we go, one pin. So that goes with that gear. So now does the gearbox come apart? No. <laughs> WD-40 before broke. <laughs> well, that one's still stuck. Right, I'm going to look at the manual, I think. Uh, let's see. TRX4 assembly manual. That one, I guess. Okay, let's download it. Save link. <laughs> URL, that's no good. <coughs> Alright then, do it that way. That's why service always time. <laughs> the thing is, it, it still runs reasonably well even in this state it's quite amazing it's just a little bit draggy but not crazy I mean I've seen new gearboxes that are stiffer than this uh, how do I download the PDF save save Save. There we go. Complete. Why is it loading in GIMP? Stupid software. Uh, that one. <coughs> Downloads. Tracks this manual open with Ocular. That looks better. <laughs> Play water or rain day. Ah, right, so you service whenever you get it wet. Yeah. It's probably the right thing to do. <laughs> I hate being sick because it makes it take longer until I can be done with my RC truck. That's true. Always service it because I'm scared in case it goes rusty. <laughs> Yeah, it is a bit of a pain. Alright, it's a gearbox. Well, that's not at all obvious. Ah. So I think that gear that's left is the stream, that one. 
So I think that gear that's left, that one, is like this, with a slot for a pin in it. So I think that one should prize up. Kind of hard to tell. Yeah, there's definitely a pin in it. So it should come away, it should prize away. Okay. Let's be a little less gentle with it. Nope, something moved. Why is that singing happy birthday? Let's skip that. <laughs> uh, because I don't buy RC four wheel drive box. Probably for the best. If I can tap it up. Not done anything? No. There's no play in there either. And that's literally all that's holding it together now. as well. It's like all three of them got pins. Output, shim, there's that pin, pin, gear that way. Somehow pressed that that way. I think I need a machine vice. And I can support it and thwack it out. All right, back in a minute with the vice. <laughs> Right, let's see if I can 
figure out how to support the bits on here. It's going to have to be something like that. Otherwise, the gear won't clear. Yeah, that's doable. So if I put my finger on there. made any impression at all. No. Oh no it has. There's a little bit of movement in there now. Yep, so that's the trick then. Just gotta try and shove it out without damaging anything. If I can get a driver in there and prize now. Nearly. Not quite. I wonder if that's a better angle. Way. Nearly out. Okay, rid of that. Should be able to take the end off the gearbox now. They want 129 US dollar just for the gearbox. Wow, that's not good. Oh, hey. Hmm, there's some funky bits in there. I'll look at that in a minute. Let's see if I can get this gear out the rest of the way first. It's an old screwdriver. God, that's still solid. <laughs> it's stuck in the next bearing now. Alright, let's carefully take the shift fork out in that case. That up there. So there's nothing else in there now other than bearings and the stuck shaft. So we should be okay. Just to lightly tap her out. There we go. Perfect. Sort of. One shaft. Will I remember how this goes back together? That's the question. Probably not, but I do have a manual. Get that out of the way. Right. So, where to start? I suppose. Take the shims out and give them a clean up. Line them all up. Let's have a clean kitchen towel. I think that's a shim in there, maybe? No, maybe not. Yeah. No, that's just part of the moulding. Okay. So that bearing will come out from this side. One bearing. That bearing... That bearing? <laughs> I don't think that is a bearing. No, that would have been that one. Okay, so now we've got this one, which is a blind fit, so that's not going to want to come out. 
We just work at it side to side. Try not to distort the plastic too much. in a bit better. Talk about stubborn. What I'd give for a Metal Gear box. Just warm it up a bit and I'll drop out. expensive for the box yeah yeah RC gearboxes are remarkably expensive and you consider how little there is in them through the inside though. There, three bearings. So that's now free of all the bearings and stuff I believe. Yeah, so that, that one's done. <sighs> Okay, so if we do that one, you can see if it was in focus, you could see. Why won't that camera ever work? Come on, focus on that. Oh, there's absolutely nothing there to focus on. useless camera. Oh well, you'll have to deal with the focus and move it away a bit. But that gear has a slot for a pin in like that. But it's so caked in stuff that it might as well be one part at the moment. Same with the bearing. It's all absolutely solid. And the bearings notch is all all hell. All that has got to come apart. But the good bit is because the gear is steel, you can pop it in the old cheap and nasty machine life. And too far. Make sure the pin is going crossways, like so. 
and then get our nice hardened steel pliers and give it a few taps and then give that a tap and it will drop out so there's our gear ready to get cleaned up and now the pin should come out except of course that's also stuck First we'll try the big pliers and see if we can rotate it free. Yeah, that's going to come out. A little bit awkward to get hold of. There it goes. There's our second one and that pin is the same size as the other one, so that's good. So now on here we have a small shim need to look after and now we can use the same trick again just close up on that get the hardened steel pliers out and start tapping and then the screwdriver oh and there it goes so it's another bearing and there's our shaft And then we got to do the same with all the other ones still. Really? <clears throat> Just PPM one because they sell RC four wheel drive R four box cheap same box. Yeah. Makes sense if you can get the cheaper one, get the cheaper one. They're going to be fun to get out. Oh, that came straight out. Very cool. So we've got another shim. There's a pin in there. Probably leave that one in. I'm going to take it out anyway. Just so when I'm rebuilding it, I can follow the instructions to the letter and not uh, get confused. Bearings out the end bit. Or not. Uh, these have got angled ends. A lot of that size. Oops. All right. Let's see if we can prize these ones out. Signature RC foil drive speed one PPM don't sell two PPM. Another bearing.
I make two wheel drive Hilux. Mm. Is that your your uh, drift truck? Ah, so he's on there. So what's in here? Weird. Got that. There's another shim. And there's a slightly rusty bearing deep in the bowels. That's going to be interesting to remove. It can just come straight off. As does the pin. Looks like the water didn't quite get in all this way. That's nice. So the spur gear has got to come off. Because I can't get the pin out otherwise. Not very nice. Try, try, yeah, trying to mod the TF2 chassis. Ah. main shaft now oh, that pin just comes straight out there's a gear I think there's only two bearings left in here easy bearing out. Now that one. My usual technique is not going to work. Does it need to come out? It looks all right. The inner race doesn't uh, isn't wobbling around in there. And there's absolutely zero notchiness in it, so I think I'm going to cheat and leave that one in. <laughs> there's absolutely no need to take that out at all. After a bit of a clean and some fresh grease, that'll be fine. No worries. Right. Two speed. Yeah, fork looks alright, just a bit grubby. How does that work? Is that one piece? Can't be one piece. Ah. That does move, but only just. I think there's another shim on there as well. Yeah. I want real scale control arms, like real one. Ah. Super scale. Are there any bearings in this? It feels like there is. Yeah, I can see them. Are the bearings in need of changing? If not, I'd rather not bother. That feels pretty much perfect to me. 
as does that. No wobble, no notchiness. So I think we can get away without taking that little cluster apart. Which is all for the better. Just give it a good wipe down and a bit of fresh grease. And that will be good to go. Okay. So, start by wiping out the grease, the old grease, the rusty grease. Let's see what we need to do. We might get away with just putting fresh grease in, otherwise we might have to clean it out properly. Depends how much of it we can clean. I'm not going to worry if there's a little bit left. Because the gearbox isn't waterproof, as we now know. <laughs> so if there's a little bit left, it doesn't matter, because there's going to be water getting in there again at some point. That's not too bad. Thinking about building up where shock tower hoops go. Mm -hmm. Building up. Use that bolt holes. Use the bolt holes. Oh, I see. I think. Hmm. TF chassis setup.
got a bearing in it. <laughs> Didn't even see that because of all the grease. I'm going to guess though, since it was uh, such so buried in grease, that it's probably fine. Well, uh, inner race is a bit wobbly. So I think that's going to want swapping. Sorry. That is all metal though, so we might be able to apply heat for this one. Use 70 millimeter shocks. Okay. That's the size that fits. Oops. Because that can help set the ride height fiddling about with the shocks. tactic because I want to smaller shock travels in the rear ah so not not a 50-50 uh, uh, type setup then This is going to smoke like buggery because of the kitchen paper so I'm going to open a window For a sec. Remind me to move it if I forget. Doesn't want to come out. gentle heat I just want to dampen uh, a bit because a leaf spring in the rear can do more than shocks ah that makes sense
stop burning. <laughs> well, it's moved a bit. Not a lot. find a shaft or something that I can sit in there that I can push it out with like a screw Plus use tow trailer. My trailer came yesterday. The trailer wheel's too big. Yeah. Find some smaller ones to fit. Gotcha. Oop. Might have made a mess underneath as well. <laughs> I think 1.9 or 2.2 pizza wheels. Eight in Greece. Ah, nice. <laughs> because they are very narrow. Yeah. Whatever looks right on the trailer in the end, isn't it? Forms right if that's more important for the particular uh, vehicle. Ooh, metal. Huh. 
Magic Fork. Right here, you can see where the bearings have been rubbing on there. Well, they've seized up. That's not so good. <laughs> Still seen worse. I put one point five 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 stud wheels LC like my real trailer. Now that should look pretty good. With some fairly small uh, tyres on it. Low profile. Compared to what you normally find on RC at least. So I won't need that anymore. Shouldn't need any of them. Back. All right. Grief. Gonna use some blue lithium. To assemble with. There we go. Does sadly there's not a lot of six dead 1.55 wheels. Ah. That's true. Yeah. Can't have it all though. There's only so many different types. Alright, how do you build a gearbox? I'll cut it in bits. Alright, need some bearings. Five, eleven, four millions of them. So that's probably going to be these guys. And we want one in each of these holes. And there. one in that one already so I just need the one. Oh, 
Didn't wipe that one out. Oops. <laughs> ah, I thought I was done cleaning, but no. My real trailer uses Land Cruiser and Patrol and Hilux 6 stud factory pizza. Maybe you could try 3D printing some wheels. You can have any design you like then. So this bit grim. Oh, there's another bearing there. <laughs> this side. One bearing. Straighten a bit. Try again. That wants to go in there. Like so. I have the boom racing one, but so they're braver, ex rather expensive. Make vintage ones. 1.55. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Bearing on the other side, one I just took out. That goes in there. Right, that's those ones. I see, so assembling the two speed first, that makes sense. Alright, input shaft. So you want two pins. There, one there, and then the funny little gear with the widget on the back goes on that side. Cool, and the input gear, which is that one, if I remember rightly, goes on that side. I should make CNC 1.55. Ah, very nice. Uh, so what's that assembly? That's that assembly going together with that on the end. That'll need some grease. I'll do that in a sec. Need a bearing on the end as well. That should just drop in. No, that's a slightly different size. Five, ten, four. They got a way smaller hole. It doesn't fit over there. That's oversized. Can't be one of these diddy little ones. Although it does fit. Don't fit in there though. No, it's got to be these. Oh, that would be sad if they don't have 
one of those. Maybe it's another one of these and they just look similar. Nope. Hmm. Way too big. Way too big. Way too big. Way too big. I see that fits, but the hole's really small. So that goes on there. Simply won't fit on there. Yeah, keep trying. That's way too big. And they've got the small holes. And there's three little tiny ones. Hmm. Plus tires too. I give the 1.55 community options. All terrain and MT something else tires, right? of a little bearing. That can't be right. Those are all the same. Hmm. Oh, there's the one I took out. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a pain to find. Oh, there's one in the bottom of the box. Oh, that's too big. So I think Boom Racing didn't put any of those in. Mud terrains, because my favourite tyre is Yokohama 31. Ah, I used to run Yokohama A008s on my Mini. <laughs> 
and that was a 10 inch wheel <laughs> So why aren't there any other bearings of that size? The outer size matches those. I think they supplied those instead, because there's four of them. And Toyo, yeah. John F. Kennedy inauguration speech. I think we can skip that. Oh, I have to reuse one of these bearings. Not ideal. It's got a little bit of a wobble to it. But it'll work. Because that's metal, I have to press it in properly. After dropping it through. shaft. Right. Because Toyota, Hilux sponsored Yokohama and Toyota tires. That makes sense. So that's the shifting shaft and they want a shim on each end. Like so. And then the fork goes in. And the fork goes in that way. Uh, and then we put the bits in gearbox. Cool, so you can grease all that up. Cocktail stick. Get rid of those old bearings. 31 optional. But USA BF Goodrich. Yeah, that also makes sense.
I've got that one. That meshes onto that one. <coughs> because LN65 Hilux Specialist and H50 Van Toyota. So how does this go together? Is that a bit? No, that's got to be that bit. That that way around. That goes in there. And that must go on there. A bit of grease on that little post as well. That's a lot of grease. Again, pretty good. Pretty good. Don't think I missed any of the shims. That would be annoying. <laughs> no, no shims on that. Whew. I know a lot of knowledge on some cars and trucks and utes and vans. Cool. Why do I have a shim? <laughs> I bet that's fallen off the other end of that shaft. So, after it comes again then. Yep. That should be on the end of that one. There we go. Right, so now that's correct. I hope. That will go on the back. First, I'm going to run a bit of grease around the edge where the two join together and see if that will just keep a little bit of the uh, water out next time it goes for a swim. You never know, it might help. Right. Oh, am I missing anything? No, I don't think so. So you should go on that way. Well, it's kind of on. But there's something getting in the way. Ah, 
that's got it. Shift fork not quite in line. Uh, and that's why some RC companies I like uh, like me to do scale design detailing. Ah, that makes sense. Get someone that actually knows what they're uh, what they're talking about. <laughs> right, I got that that way up. So got the screw in there. Screw in the top one. And two in the back. Now we can nip them up. Not super tight, just taking up the slack. Like so. And then hopefully that will spin. And it does. It'll be a little bit stiff while it spreads the grease out. But it is smooth, so that's the main thing. And the gear shift plunger moves in and out without any trouble at all. Couldn't be better. Because make lots of 1.1 scale stuff on ute tray and truck body. Cool. Huh. Right, more bearings. One in there. So, and three in the end cap, which is the three we've got left. Like so. Alright, so now we've got a pin in there, so I'm going to put some grease on the back. Just because it will probably fill up with water. I've blocked the hole for the pin now and I can't see it. That's a good start. There's the hole on the other side. Pin and then we need gear. Blob of grease and the shaft like so. Clean off the excess and use it on the gear teeth. Why not? So that's that one. Now they want the long output shaft, which will have a pin going through it and a gear on the end. Bit of a tight fit, so it's probably still got some corrosion on it. That would just mean it doesn't go anywhere. Oh, that was a hell of a noise. What's this? Raising underscore is now following on Twitch. Thanks for the follow. 
I want to build RC boats, like jet boats, not get RC tractor. Boats are fun, as long as you've got somewhere to run them. Creepy. That goes in there. So there's that one. It must go on that side. So I'm going to put a bit of grease in here. Just so the shaft is running in a nice greased up hole. Hopefully stop a bit more of the water getting in. If I need a little bit. It'll probably help. Okay, that's that shaft. Uh, I have my little river on my backyard. Ah, got your own boating lake or boating river. <laughs> Sounds good to me. gentle persuasion with this one I think. No. I'm putting it on the wrong side. Yeah. <laughs> Do, do, do. Usually instructions, that's what they're for. He says as he ignores them completely. <laughs> oh yeah, it fits much better on that side. <laughs> oh dear. Never mind. That's why if you're going to bash things, you don't bash them too hard the first time. Let's get some grease in between the gears, so that'll get sucked around. And pop that in. I do believe I missed the shims, but never mind. Double check. Yeah. Uh, yep, I did. No biggie. Just need to put a shim on there. Just to get back in. That shaft out. Pop a shim on the end and pull it back in. That sticky grease. <laughs> Plus with RC4, uh, play with RC4, right? My old teacher play train RC. I help. Oh, uh, garden scale stuff. Yeah. That's a whole other hobby. <laughs> Alright, run some grease around the edge of this.
Right, so that should go on there. Like so. And then there's three screws. I've got four screws. I wonder where the fourth one went. Back play when in high school. Ah. So a little while ago then, I guess. <laughs> Wipe away the grease. the screw come from then. Yeah, that's where it came from. Missed that one. He start again me. Ah. The only model train stuff I do is N gauge, which is really really small. <laughs> See if she spins. Yeah. No clicking, no notching. Beauty. That's going to be a lot smoother. Sweet. Alright, I'll put the lid back on that, yeah, just in case I need it. I don't think we're going to need any more bearings. Nine years ago. So, do, do he big one? Do he big one? Big layout. Big trains. Alright, put the clutch back together. Without touching the surfaces or trying to yeah, drop the stack of washers I make a dyno for my test run. RC Big Train. <laughs> yeah, it'd be fun to do some big um, loco stuff, but there's just not enough space. the outputs. Yep, yeah, that's freeing up as the grease spreads out. 
If I push that in, there's the other gear. That's a little bit stiffer. That's freeing up. That's freeing up nice. Sweet. And on to a winner. So I'm going to put a little bit of grease around the back of the output shafts before I put it back together. And then when the drive or prop shaft yoke goes on, it should squish that out a bit. And just seal around the bearing with any luck. Same on the other one. Just a little bit. So that's ready to go back in. Who'd have thought we'd get that far? It's only taken an hour and ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Right, so what I'm going to do, because That looks pretty terrible. Oh yeah, I think it's his trains a bit too big, so we have to build a lot of tracks to put in the garden. Well, it's a good excuse to build railway track, isn't it? Why not? <laughs> yeah, fun. All right, I'm going to pop downstairs, and I'm going to give this a quick clean out. Nothing too major, just brush it out and give it a white round. So in the meantime. I'm going to pop that on one of these. Let's skip that. Find a, find a good one. What's this one? No. That'll do. There we go. So I'll do that and that. And as it says, I'll be right back after I give this a quick muck out. And then we can start putting it all back together. Probably give the motor a bit of an oil up as well. Hmm. Right, back.
I am back. I've given it a quick clean out. It's a bit wet still, so a bit of a wipe to get the rest out. And put back on the camera. There we go. So it's kind of a mix of oil of mud where it's dried out, a bit of oil. Just uh, nice to clean it up a bit. Not going to be too fussy because the next time out it'll probably get caked in mud again. But, uh, that's a bit better. It'll do. Okay. Drink. <sighs> so, how did it all go back together again? Need to put the shift servo on the gearbox. There it is. So, that goes on that side. That's the one. Give this a quick wipe down too. Just so it looks a bit tidier. <laughs> I want to know oil up the motor. I probably will, because it's a bit knackered, that one, so it's probably going to squeak. <laughs> uh, ne next month, hopefully, I'll be replacing it with a, a hobby wing axe. So I'm kind of uh, uh, trying to make that one last just long enough. How? Well, it's a bushed motor, so literally just a drop of oil on the bushes. And give it a minute to run in a bit. And then when you start the motor up, start it slow. And the oil normally finds its way around everywhere. Do I do that right? I probably should have hooked that in before screwing the servo on. Uh, if if I were to get uh, sorry, if I were to keep this model with a brushed motor, I would probably replace it with one of the Holmes Hobbies. Uh, what is it? Trailmaster Sport. So that's a 550, 21 turn, I think, which matches the um, Traxxas motor pretty close thank you for helping me anytime The real trick is with the um, Trailmaster motor, that's uh, ball raced instead of bushed. So as long as you're not too silly with the water and letting it rust up, it lasts a lot longer than the Traxxas one. Yeah. Ah, I see, it goes like that and the cable goes across the top. 
Very nice. Right, now which screws went where? There's the manual. Because never oil my motor. Ah. Well, if it doesn't squeak, I wouldn't worry. I'll show you a worn out one. Uh, I think that's a bad one. Oh yeah. So, this is still not going to focus, but I'll give it a go. This is the current motor. And you can see the big bushing on the end. And there's a bushing at that end rather than a ball race. But at the moment, if I grab this and wobble, it's all pretty stable. So for now, I'll just put some oil right in the corners and let it soak in a bit. But this motor is one that um, had been submarined a lot. And what happens is the shaft starts wearing away at the bushing and you can see if I can get my fingers in lots and lots of play so this motor is what's called toast <laughs> it does actually run but it makes a hell of a racket but with the ball race motor that's not really a problem but ideally once a motor starts squealing a bit which is a good indication that the bushings have had it. You should uh, replace it anyway. But a bit of oil or something will extend its life a bit. Right, so how... What screws? Oh, that's a fat little good. So in the manual they build the gearbox and then they go onto the axles. How do you fit the gearbox? Still on the axles. Huh. Three by ten. Because no one explained to me. Well, yeah, it's a, ju just a maintenance thing, you know. So what we got? Those are the battery. That's the gearbox. That will be the bottom one. And we've got three cap heads and four round ones. Too long and too short. So the short ones will be the tens. Today, today. Now, generally, with the RC stuff, if you do other mechanical things, it's all. Pretty self-explanatory, I think. If it squeaks, oil it. <laughs> if it squeaks really badly, replace it. I do after live stream, right? It's it's especially important if if you've been underwater, or even just got it well splashed in water. Uh, that kind of, what to say, it, it washes away the lubrication in the motor. Which is why that other one had a wobbly shaft. Because it was run essentially without any lubrication. Cool. So we've got that in there. Uh, and we've got speed control. Which has got itself well hooked up. Speed control goes there. Okay, under there. Keep the cable tidy. So the speed control needs two screws. Well, we 
I've got these two. Yeah, that looks about right. There are only two that are the right sort of size. Put one in there, and one in there. There's the hole. Okay. Plus check two. It's always a good idea. Speed control back in. And now we've got the motor. So, all I'm going to do is before we power it up, just put a drop right on the bearing where the shaft goes in. And the same on the other side. Tiny bit of thin oil. Give it a spin and then just leave it for a couple of minutes. I need a battery. Oh, but I haven't got a battery. I haven't got a battery. Right, I need to get a battery. So we're back again in a sec. <laughs> uh, and buy new servo too. Ah, yeah, servos do tend to break and wear out. There we go. Because they start making noise and glitching. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, motors generally just start squealing. When they're bushed anyway. Uh, ball raced ones are quite a bit better. But usually more expensive. Transmitter on. Plug in the motor. Plug in a battery. You same RC four wheel drive, the cheap one, servo. Aha. All right, let's see what it does. Yeah, steering works. Servos are kind of making a funny noise. Need endpoints. Never mind. All right. See, she's a bit noisy. Getting quieter. Runs better in reverse than forwards. <laughs> it is a reverse motor. I'll put a bit more oil in. Let's see if it will soak down. It 
really does just need a new motor. But don't really want to spend 20 quid on a motor when I'm planning to replace it all with brushless. So it'll do. Good as it's going to get. So that's pretty much ready to go on, but I'll leave it on the side. Let's pop the drive shafts back on. going to be easier said than done now I put the gearbox in. <laughs> Never mind. I might have to take the two screws out again just so I can manipulate it round. No, get that one on. If I can get that one on I'll probably get the other one on too. Not waterproof on ready to run. Ah, we'll cut some costs there then. As they do, I suppose. Shaft. Alright, let's see if I can get the rear one on. China sell five dollars. 
Sounds like a good high-end servo for that price. <laughs> All right. So what am I missing? There's a screw that goes in there. Ah, that's probably the one. Yeah. So we've got battery tray screws and the three screws that hold the motor in. So that must be this one. Cool. Use them eight months now. Ah. Uh -huh. Seems good. Slot the motor into its slot. Put the cover on. And fit the three screws. And we can see how it spins. Because over my one cheap, and I'm not sure I see a difference, it's the same. Ah, uh, rebranded again, I guess. Only just joined, family movie time just finished. Ah, anything good? <laughs> ah, I think I feel a, a Back to the Future marathon coming on at some point. Doom. Cool. Well, other than the motor still being a bit noisy, it sounds all right. All right, radio one. In. Lift it up. Oh, helps if you plug the motor in, doesn't it? <laughs> Not really. Spy next door. Ah, could be worse. That's uh, Jackie Chan. His movies are always a bit of a giggle. Alright, let's try that again. Second gear. Bang. That's not bad. Just brand name is different, but it's the same thing, right? Correct. Ah. Ah, so, and I get to change the motor and the speed control to uh, axe or something. That should all run pretty nicely. Right, need a zip tie now. Uh, let's have yellow since I've got millions of them. Might have American Pie Marathon later. <laughs> uh, I guess that's after the kids go to bed. If you've got kids, of course. Ooh. Or are the kids old enough? There's a thing.
never see apple pie quite the same way. <laughs> do, do, do. Yeah, that works. So that's all the cables tidy out of the way. I feel like I should probably give that a clean as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, I better had, hadn't I? But then you will never see it. But that's not the point. You clean it. Right, I'm gonna give that a clean. See if I can do that in the bathroom sink. <laughs> Alright, back in a minute. Yeah, a bit better. Uh, one. I think do checklist what buy tires. Or buy four sets of tires always. Full set of tires. Four tires. I'll do. 
That looks a bit better. Alright, so that goes in there. Like so. Button heads. Welcome back. <laughs> Mickey Thompson, one point five five, one five mil, ten dollar four sets in China. Ooh. That's what I've got on my um CCO1 Progero. So if I've got the RC four wheel drive ones and they cost a small fortune. Move them loose for now. Make sure that cable's not gonna get stuck. RC4 is at 87. Ah, slightly smaller. I think that's all of it now. Let's clear a bit of room so I don't demolish something expensive on the proper test. Killer body, 95 millimeter. Right. Sort of. Put the mouse out of the way. Right. Power. Diff locks. Lift that one side. Yeah. Diff lock seems alright. Open the diffs. Yeah. Second gear. 
first gear. Yeah. That's working a treat. Guessing you're into metal music. Yeah, pretty much. Unfortunately, everybody's gone and copyrighted it, so you end up with this instead. <laughs> Alright, where's the body? Am I greasy? A little bit. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Turn that light off. There we go. Colour bounce is a bit funky, but there you go. Players can't use brand Desert King 95 millimeters and use brand name 87 millimeters. Ooh, strange. In your spare time, give Skindred Ali Satan. There's a name. <laughs> I listen, yeah. <laughs> what can I stick onto that tire? <laughs> I think that'll do. Uh, that only took. Where's the time? Uh, 2 hours 56 minutes. So 3 hours to rebuild a gearbox. That's got to be a record. Not necessarily a good one. <laughs> Send pick discord. did or you're going to send one Which channel are you going to put it in? I'm going to guess RC Chit Chat. Waiting with bated breath. Tell you what, if you put it in uh, live stream chat, then I can do that. I think that work. Then I think it's going to be dinner time. Get grease on, grease pot. That. And what 
lost it. I need, I don't need that. Cheesy mash, beans and sausage I had. Nice. I don't know what I'm going to have. I think I've got some beef slices in the fridge that are um, uh, no longer completely fresh. So I'll probably have those in the sandwich. <laughs> something with them though. I think I've got some microwavable rice. Send it. Send it? I've sent it. Where did you send it? RC Chit Chat. Tires. Does that work? Where's the other window? Ooh. Oh, it kind of works. Off the top of the screen now. Click out. What's that look like? Oh, that'll do. There's not much depth on the tread on those, is there? Probably quite good for trailing, though, as opposed to um, uh, proper rock climbing. So driving through the woods and stuff, I work a treat. Yeah, good. Right, so that guy's done. But unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to do the steering on this one tonight. There you go. Let's turn that light back on. Because I've got uh, another steering servo for it. So, got all the bits. Just got to do it. Alright, what's this? Yep, RC four wheel drive, can't use the brand name. Right. <laughs> no, e everything's copyright or trademark or whatever. It's all a bit of a faff. Doesn't matter who you are. <laughs> right, dinner time. So I'm going to very hesitantly say tomorrow we'll do the steering servo on the GOM. But last time I said tomorrow it was over a week. So, yeah. Well, what's this? Keith! Good evening. In previous videos, you have used a benchtop power supply. What make is it? Would you believe it was made by Maplin, which are now out of business? Uh, but it is quite a handy size. Looking on Amazon, there is a number to choose from. Yeah. Um, for, for most of the RC stuff, a switching supply is fine. So any fairly compact power supply. Uh, let's do that. So any fairly compact power supply that will output 3 to 5 amps is more than you need for a bench top. Uh, if you are doing heavier loads, then a uh, linear power supply is better, but they're generally much bigger and heavier. And they've got a whacking great transformer in them instead of a switch mode supply. Uh, what else? Voltage. Um, you shouldn't need to go above 30 or 40 volts for RC. Um, you should be looking in the region of 50, 75 quid. In the UK that is anyway. Uh, you probably don't need the precision. So you don't need to go for a proper branded one. If, if it's 100 millivolts off, it's not going to matter. And that's quite a big error, so uh, yeah, pick, pick one 
look at the reviews. If everybody says that it went up in smoke in five minutes, pick a different one. <laughs> All the usual stuff. Uh, what else have we got? So economy permitting, what's the next build? Um, well, the, the SCX-10 III <laughs> is rather tempting. Uh, but I think at the moment I'm just going to go around and finally fix all the RCs that I've um, kind of left to sit. Because I've got uh, th three or four more that are in a bit of a state. So I'll probably work my way through them. Finish the WPL. Now there's another RC under there that needs working on. So that's four. Uh, I'd quite like to get my old Clodbuster going. That's another one. Yeah, I don't know. J just fix what I've got, really. I don't need another truck at the moment. Would be nice, though. <laughs> Can never have too many. Anyway, I'm getting hungry and I'm rambling. So that's it, end of stream. Let's do that one. Uh, what? Go away. That one. Yeah. I can no longer skip the video. It's asking me if I want to remove it. So, okay, that can stay like that then. Thumbs up and awesome. And thank you and have a good evening. You too. Oh, I suppose I should get rid of that. Alright, I'll leave that on for a couple of minutes, as usual. And then I'll stop the stream. So, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for the chat. Thanks for the picture, I suppose, of the tyres. And, yeah. Enjoy your... COVID-19 enforced vacation, I suppose. Yeah, so, see ya.